Today's guest is a naturopath, author, and over the past 24 years of treating allergies has impacted over 20,000 lives. Today, she's going to share with you new insights, ideas, and information to overcome your allergies. Would you please help me welcome our good friend, Dr. Inga. Welcome. Well, thank you for being here. Every time I hear it. Well, thank you for being here. I wish you were here with me uh, 35 years ago when I used to suffer, suffer extreme allergies, so it's nice to be learning today. And before you started your journey to becoming a doctor and specialising as a naturopath, what was the dream that you started with and what excited you about that dream? Well, I didn't really have a dream about that from the beginning at all. I was interested in, in healing. I did uh, Jose Silva's um, uh, when it was called Control Mental at that time. I lived in Venezuela. And then he had a superior course. I took that a couple of times, which was hands-on healing. It was really fascinating. So I, I did that while I was a potter. So I didn't charge for my treatments. It was just for fun and interesting. And uh, then my kids were grown and uh, I came to America. As a matter of fact, for a romance that, of course, did not work. So I was <laughs> sitting on the beach one time without work, without work permit, without anything to go back to. And, uh, well, things changed. I came to here to the States and um, things changed again. I was going to work with, um, with arts with a friend of mine and then I tripped and broke my wrist in five places. So I went to acupuncture school and signed up. So here in Florida, I'm licensed acupuncture physician. And um, then I finished, I graduated in 95 and um, had loved what I was doing, had great results. And about a year after I was changing the sheet on my um, treatment table and threw my back out and couldn't move. So after that, I went through a lot of treatments, chiropractic, massage, acupuncture, and the pain, it was probably, they call it Kundalini rising, but it was nothing pleasant about it at all. It was just a pain that didn't move. It just got bigger and bigger from my lower back up to my head mm -hmm. and I could hardly move. So. Um, of course, I had to figure out what to do because nothing of what I was doing, even alternative medicine, it did not help. So it was diagnosed as fibromyalgia. And I started studying all kinds of different modalities and found that the allergies is the root to many illnesses. And it was not as common then, I mean, that's now 25 years ago, over 25 years ago. So um, with the food we have and uh, with the poison and the GMO and do I dare to say vaccinations, everybody gets a weaker immune system because vaccinations, they, I mean, I think they're given too early. The kids are not developed enough and they're getting, given, getting too many. And every generation now for several generations have gotten a lot of, of vaccines, which I think have kind of made every generation weaker than the one before. Mm, mm. And uh, Interesting that you mentioned the allergies. With these allergies, what I've learned is that more than 50 million Americans suffer from allergies. And there's a whole host of different allergies. What are the most common allergies that you're seeing? Well, the most, if we take the basic, is basic foods like egg and chicken and um, dairy, wheat and grains. Um, of course, fish, shellfish. And I don't have it straight in my head right now how to remember but there are like seven or eight of the basic ones so um i created a kit to 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 eliminate the allergies but the thing is that people often they don't have a clue that 
what they are suffering from come from allergies. So if you were to describe an allergy, what is an allergy? How would somebody understand that they have an allergy? Well, first of all, I use allergies very loosely because that's what my kit is called. It's called the allergy kit. But it is also sensitivities. So it's not that, you know, the medical term for allergies is different from intolerances or sensitivities. But it works in a way in the same way. Some come a little later reactions with uh, sensitivities, for example, allergies, they are mostly immediate. But um, so the, the allergy is going to be immediate and the sensitivity are often a little relay, uh, yeah, delayed. Delayed. So, for example, if I, I, I used to be a uh, cabin crew with Emirates Airline. And we would fly around the world and we would serve people in business class and first class. And I remember having a business class customer and she looked at the menu and she said, I'll have the fish meal. So we delivered the fish and then she had an allergic reaction and she ate the fish and she ate the prawns and she started to swell up and she's screaming for help. Ah, I'm an allergy. I got an allergic reaction. And so we're trying to find the EpiPen. And I said, do you have any allergies? And she said, yes. And I said, what are you allergic to? She said, fish. I said, what are you doing eating the fish? She said, I thought it would be different on the aircraft. This is Emirates. <laughs> I went, I went uh, madam, we're at 40,000 feet. This is not a good place to have a anaphylactic reaction. And uh, there we are is uh, jabbing that EpiPen into the upper quarter. Well, she would have died thigh. otherwise probably. She would have. She would have. Yeah. And it wasn't uncommon. It was a very common thing. Every aircraft that we travelled with had an emergency medical kit, which included the EpiPen for the people who had anaphylactic reactions or shock. And it was common. It was common. It was, it was a daily occurrence. I wonder where the, she thought the fish came from, from the air. <laughs> well, she said, well, this is Emirates. It should be different. You know, this is the world's first five-star airline. It should be different. <laughs> so maybe she just wasn't, uh, well, we call it aircraft brain. There's limited oxygen saturation and people can't think yes, uh, very, very that, well at all. That could be an excuse. <laughs> but uh, the thing is that allergies, what I call allergies or sensitivities, they are in a way subtle because they don't have to be a, a, a runny nose or red eyes or eczema. It can be anything else and what it normally affects and the worst thing is really the digestive system mm. so there are so many things that uh, act in combination with the um, uh, of course to digest your food first of all the sad di diet the standard american diet which has so much you know wheat and all that stuff that people shouldn't shouldn't really eat uh, the wheat has a protein that makes holes in, in the intestinal lining, for example. And then the um, partially digested food can go directly out in the bread, bled, bled, bloodstream, creating uh, antibodies and then creating allergies. Mm -hmm. And this is a vicious cycle. Also not eating organic food with all the toxins from the Roundup that has glyphosate. So... Uh, when your digestive system is not good, first of all, it's not you don't only get allergies, you don't feel good, you also get anxious and depressed, and the whole thing what comes with it. Mm. Giving weight, for example, because all the hormones get off <clears throat> off balance. So it's a whole cycle. I noticed when I eat wheat. So if I'm eating anything with bread and and I, and I love wheat bix, I love I love eating wheat bix. My mum told me when I was younger I'd eat 21. I ate 21 in a day. I love them, but I find that my stomach pops. If I have one or two wheat bix, the stomach just pops out and I'm bloated immediately. But I love eating it. But every time I eat them, my belly pops. If I have breads, my belly pops immediately. But gee, that bread tastes good. I want it on hamburgers, I want the pizza, I want it all. But I now understand what it does to my body. And when I was growing up, um, I had a lot of allergies. And it's interesting you're talking about the connection here with the with the inner processing of the body. I had uh, mold allergies. So mum and dad were pulling apart the house. I had dust mites and they ripped up all the carpets and they laid timber floorboards. 
Um, I, I don't think I had pet allergies, but when it came to the food allergies, definitely lactose intolerant. The wheats were no good. Tomato was no good. And then I had all the pollen and the grass. Yeah. And I probably lived in the worst part of um, Australia for pollens. So I was on the asthma puffers. <laughs> in, the, in the big one. That looks like a vacuum. <laughs> I'm having these and uh, my bronchial tubes are collapsing. I'm getting bleeding noses. But also, at that time, I was also diagnosed with a learning disability. So it's quite interesting that um, it's impacting the body, but also all at the same time, the learning disabilities are there. Is this a connection that you're also seeing? Oh, absolutely. And uh, wheat, for example, has... um this protein that makes holes in the intestine, uh, but it also has uh, what they call it, glutamorphine, which makes it uh, makes you addicted to it. And um, yeah, I can eat a, if I'm eating spaghetti bolognese, I can eat one bowl, I can eat two bowls, I can eat yeah. three bowls. I, I could eat a kilo of that stuff, and I and I'd be so asking hard. for more. It's so hard to go, to get off of it because of that, mm. and it affect it it. it directly affects the brain. It affects the the neurotransmitters. So often, especially kids on the spectrum, they have temper tantrums or meltdowns when they eat wheat. And also it can affect their eye contact too. And uh, it's really similar to caseine, which also has a caseine morphine. So it's also has to do with addictions. So it's, and an, and an allergy apart from that. So uh, many kids are allergic to milk. And one of the symptoms of milk um, allergy is that they get ear infections. And these poor okay. kids, instead of getting eliminating the allergy to milk or take them off of it, they get antibiotics. So they get their gut gets disturbed on, in a very early age. Mm. I think that sounds true for me and my children. Um, I find that whenever I go to the pool, I get a nose or an ear infection. So do my children, but we also love to drink milk. Yes. So, so it maybe can that. it can also be an alert allergy to chlorine. Mm. And then if you take um, dust mites, for example, that you mentioned, dust mites, uh, an allergy to dust mites often show up as uh, breathing difficulties during the night or asthma. So it's the same thing. You, they get medications and they don't do anything for the cause. Mm-hmm. It, it's so interesting, these allergies. And I believe there's a lot of people there treating them at the level of symptomology. What, what do you think is the most effective, treating it at the level of symptomology or getting to the root cause of the issue? To get to the root cause would be, and you know, it's not only one thing. It's not only to add to um, eliminate the allergies. It's just to change diet, to eat organic first of all, because all the toxins really, really affect us. And uh, not eating the wheat, avoid sugar because that's another thing that co- that causes addiction. And um, for example, with my allergy kit, you get rid of the cravings. So it makes it easier to go off of these foods. Otherwise, it's, if somebody is addicted to sugar, they can't go off of it. So mm. it's a vicious cycle. They can't lose the weight. They don't feel good. And they get candida. And then they get depressed. And then they get gut problems. It's a vicious cycle. Mm. All the hormones go off. <laughs> they can't sleep. You know, it's... I know what it's like when my house runs out of coffee for a couple of days. <laughs> Not a nice house to be in. <laughs> you feel like, yeah, you really feel like you're going cold turkey and you're trying to wean yourself off it. And sugar, in in my mind, it's almost in everything. I was watching one of these TV shows the other day how they were baking um, a rack of ribs and they were making up the sauce for the rack of ribs. Now, first of all, I get the rack of ribs. Okay, they're going to barbecue that. But the sauce, I said to my wife, I said, I can't believe how much sugar they have put in that sauce. And they had the, they had the, 
the liquid sugar. I'm not sure what that is, the fructose. And then they yeah, had probably the high fructose. It's high English. fructose. And then, and then they had the brown sugar. Then they had the cane sugar. Then they had the white sugar. And it was all going in. And they must have been kilos of sugar going in to create this sauce. And I was just shocked to how much sugar was actually in that. I had no idea. I thought sauce must have been something else until I had actually seen what was going into it. Actually, it was quite actually frightening. The tomatoes or what? <laughs> no, I know it. And I think it started mostly in the 90s when they started with fat-free. Mm. First of all, people thought they could eat twice as much. <laughs> and They sold us on that really good. And food without uh, fat doesn't taste anything so then they had to put sugar in it so it's sugar in everything and the food here here in america is very sweet wherever you go i went and to the west coast they have taught people to like the sweet thing mm. and and they and nobody eats any bitter we need both mm. we don't really need sweets but there's so many things that are sweets naturally sweet naturally you don't have to add sugar but nobody Nobody really eats be uh, bitters, which, mm -hmm. for example, arugula, uh, lettuce, and uh, dandelion, and things like that, to counteract all the sweets. And I think that is also partially why a lot of people have digestive problems, because their gallbladder gets clogged if, uh, if you don't have, if you don't take the bitter, if you don't have that balance, then there is like the stomach acid cannot uh, develop and it cannot work with the bile that's supposed to be come out, coming out in the small intestine, and then it goes to the liver that cannot do its job. So many people, they end up with clogged gallbladders or stones in the gallbladder and have to yank that out. Mm. And that's not good either. I was on the west coast of America for two weeks, and I rang my wife after the first week, and I said, I think I'm pregnant. And she said, what are you talking about? I said, I think I'm pregnant. I said, I haven't passed stool for a week Oof. and my stomach is bloating and bloating and bloating. And she said, are you trying to eat some good food? And I said, it doesn't matter where I go. It doesn't matter what restaurant I go. I can't find good food. And by the second week, I said to her again, I said, I, I, I think I might be having twins. I said, my belly is just so big and I can't pass stool. And the diet was so different from what, from what we were accustomed mm -hmm. to here in Taiwan because we eat a lot of vegetables here in soup. So we'll have a clear soup base, we'll boil up the vegetables, and we'll only eat a small portion of meat and a small portion of rice. So it's a very clean diet. Yes. But once I went to America mm -hmm. for two weeks, I couldn't pass stool. And I was really blogged up. I, I, was, I was sick. I couldn't sleep properly. Yes, I was. You know, maybe you didn't even drink enough because with the soups you get a lot of liquid. And yeah. a lot of, of constipation is because people don't drink enough. Mm -hmm. I, I was drinking the water, but I even noticed that the taste of the water was different. It was a very different water. So however they've processed it, processed it into the bottle, it was a very different type of water. Um, I remember having, is it, uh, I forget the brand of the water I was drinking, but it just it didn't taste no, there's something different about it. Whatever they'd taken out of it or put into it, it was different. Now, I want to head over to your website and learn more about what you're doing for our clients and our friends who are suffering allergies and they want to get natural relief. What can we take away from your website? Well, they can go to the website, uh, theallergykit.com. I also have another website, which is dringe.com. It's D-R-Y-N-G-E.com, where they can download... Uh, the PDF on my book for uh, it's about autism, uh, finding your lost child, tips and uh, there is light at the end of the tunnel and there is also a link you can uh, download um, ten surprising facts about um, about allergies that you didn't know. Excellent, wonderful. So, ladies and gentlemen, what I want you to do, I want you to head over to Dr. Inga. Com. I'll also put the link in the show notes below. There's a copy of the book. You can access the book. You can access some resources. You can learn more about the allergy kit here. Yeah. And also, if you want to go to the website, theallergykit.com, you can learn more about that there. Now, especially if you're a parent. I remember my parents, they spent so much time treating my allergies. And it was very uncomfortable for me. Uh, when I was younger, I was having all those 
prick test. Pick, 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 oh, pick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're allergic to this, okay? Yeah. Mum's got to change. Yes. <laughs> got to have this asthma puffer. And um, I, I believe really that uh, we're so lucky today with the research that's been taking place since even when I was a boy uh, over the past 25 to 35 years. We can do it naturally and it's much better for the body. And living here in Taiwan, we... We spent a lot of time with the Chinese medicine doctor to treat this naturally. Yes. Yes. And we prefer to get to the root cause than treating the symptomology because we know when we treat the symptomology, when I take the Zyrtex or when I take the Clarentine or the Clarinase, it's going to give me short-term relief for today. But that thing, whatever it's going to be, the root cause, if, I'm, if my diet's still no good, it's going to come back, come back, come back. Come back with a vengeance. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's what happens. And, and that is because you don't, if you just are covering up a Band-Aid with a Band-Aid, uh, your gut cannot heal. And, you know, the gut and, and the brain, they are directly connected through the vagus nerve. And that is why, for example, depression and uh, gut problems are related. Because almost 100% of serotonin, the well feel good uh, Hormone is created in the gut. Mm. percent of the dopamine, and there are others also. They are created in the gut, and if your gut is not healthy, it's not created. So that's that's yeah, where that, a lot that of would be a wonderful conversation, and it'd be a very good conversation. And for those people who are wondering what serotonin is, it's nature's happy drug. It's that feel good feeling that you get when you achieve your goals. But if uh, the gut's no good, it's going to be hard to access that serotonin rush. Well, thank you, Dr. Inga, for joining us today. We appreciate your knowledge and your insights. And ladies and gentlemen, I want you to head to dringa.com now, learn more about overcoming your own allergies. Dr. Inga, thank you so much for your time today. And ladies and gentlemen, remember, one new idea at the right time is enough to change your life. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Wow, thank you so much.